Hello and welcome to the fourth beginner's Photoshop tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to remedy this and other problems using the text tool. So in the previous tutorial, which you can find by clicking on the annotation to the top left of the screen, we uh, looked at the basics of the text tool and now we're going to look at some other functions. So this problem is something that happened to me a lot when I was starting with Photoshop. You type one layer and then you type another line of text. And you type a third line of text and they would all collide into each other. And a lot of people don't know how to solve this and they try and solve it by you know, double spacing and triple spacing. But that gets quite messy. And the way to solve it is very easy. I just make the text grey so you can see it much better. If you click on this menu here on the far right of the text tool panel, and we open the character and paragraph panels. Now these panels give us some extra options for our text and the one we want to look at is the leading. Now what the leading does is it affects the relationship with the current selected uh, line of text and all lines above it. So simply if we highlight all the text layers and increase the leading we will increase the spacing between the lines. If I just decrease the size of this text for illustrative purposes, you can select the leading to be an automatic figure. However, if you want more control, you can change the leading yourself to something like that, or perhaps a bit more spaced out. Now, it's important to note that the leading affects the relationship between one line and the line above it. So for example, if I highlight just the first line and change the leading, you will notice absolutely nothing happens. However, if I highlight the second line and change the leading, you'll notice lines two and three move down. Now there are two reasons for this. Firstly, by changing line two, I'm affecting line two's relationship with line one and that's pushing that down. And secondly, when I change line two, the relationship between line three and line two is not affected, so it will move that down with it to keep the leading between line 2 and line 3 the same. So that's the leading tool. There are other tools, of course, these two just repeat what we've done in the last tutorial, the character and the fonts and the size. This is the tracking and it affects the, um, the distance between each specific character. So if I just delete everything except for the first line and I move that into the middle Um, the tracking will affect the distance between the between the letters. So if I just highlight this and change the tracking, I can make the letters very spaced out or I can make the letters quite bunched together. Zero is the default and um, any number after that is the number of pixels uh, away and two, uh, uh, sorry, a number of pixels above or below zero that the text will be moved together. Now again, if I just highlight one letter to show you, what this does is it affects the relationship with the letter and the letter after it. So for example, changing the tracking for the last letter does nothing. Of course, as you can see, it extends the text box out and if you were to type another letter, it would type it there. However, it doesn't affect it if you have no layers, uh, no other text there. So you can just increase the tracking for two or three letters to get a, a more precise uh, a more precise control of your text. Some other options that we have uh, if I just set the tracking back to sorry the, uh, yeah, the tracking back to zero is kerning and that's the relationship between two characters. So I could change the kerning between two characters um, to say 50. And that will change the relationship between the two characters that, that the that the um, the uh, cursor is between. So if I put it between the T and the L, and I set it to 50, it will space the, it will increase the space between the T and the L. And that's just a way of doing doing it character by character without having to change the um, without having to change the tracking for each character. Highlighting the text, there will be two more options to note. Uh, the first is the vertical stretching and the second is the horizontal stretching. 
so you can do that if you want to stretch your text in any direction although I wouldn't recommend usually doing that as the effect isn't too uh, isn't too nice on the eyes for example if I just stretch this text out a lot as you can see it doesn't look as good uh, if I bring this back to bold another few options that we have are we can change the um, we can change the actual shift of the baseline in text and while highlighting all the text this doesn't seem like a very um, amazing option we can actually do this per character so we can create a really dynamic image here of lots of different characters shifting in all directions and as I've noted in the last tutorial since this is uh, Photoshop's text tool it will keep the text editable of course though whilst uh, when you highlight all the text you'll have to do it again for each character because the baseline shift was done for that specific character but uh, if you carry on typing, you can select the base. You can type on the baseline shift. It basically changes the baseline for each um, for each character. However, if we set that all to zero, we can go through the other tools very quickly. The other tools um, are are more text um, oriented tools. So, for example, we can force um, uppercase on all the letters. So, if I force caps and type the word title in lowercase, it will actually force capitals. Uh, and if I take off force caps, you'll see that I actually that's how I typed it. The text is already bold, but we can actually embolden it further by clicking on the faux bold effect. And that will just increase the boldness of the text a little bit more. We also have italic, as I've said, caps. There's also the effect to small caps, which um, makes it caps but uh, decreases the size and we can make it superscript subscript again this is useful if you are uh, if you have a lot of text so for example do something like that um, and obviously underline and strike through which are very useful effects and again you can change this so that it doesn't appear on some characters and appears on others. That's it for this tutorial. Uh, the paragraph box itself, um, we're not going to go through that much in this tutorial because it's really for when you have blocks of text and the only other effects are, um, are the, the ones that I've already shown you in the previous tutorial where you can change the alignment. So that's it for this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.